We are now at the um, Israeli Museum, at the archaeological part, which is huge. Sadly, I do have only half an hour to show you one part, and I decided to do to talk about um, Second Temple time, uh, Jews, and Jesus is a part of them as well. But uh, I cannot shout here. Then don't ask me why I'm... Sp why it's like that? Because I don't know if it's... If it's okay to disturb the people here but let's go in and if he will tell me not to talk then I will stop that video the first thing that we can actually see here is Herodion Herodion is where King Herod built himself a fortress and that was part of the theater that he built himself um, in the Jewish temple in Jerusalem, we try not to add anything with figures because of the second command said you should have no figures. But here in East Palace, he could do that. But the most important object here is this tomb. Herodion, it's a must. If you are in Israel, don't say no to Herodion unless it's going to be in the middle of, of uh, August and it's hot. Then it's a beautiful fortress that he built to his mother. And then he destroyed it and built himself a kind of a mausoleum. It took us here to find this tomb because we actually sh were sure that it's on top of it, but we found it in that area. The tomb was smashed into small pieces, mainly because uh, people hate him, Jews, Christians, and even Romans. That's how the mausoleum looks like. What you find here is part of the top, part of the nefesh, and he was Nabatan, Edomi, Jew, whatever, Roman citizen. Then he actually mixed everything in his tomb. This is kind of a, um, a vase that used to put the the hash of the dead man in it through the Nabatim um, religion customs. Then this is a kind of a symbol of it. The lower one is more like Greek, the, uh, the middle one is Greek, the, the lower one is more like a Roman, but you can see part of his tomb right here in front of you. To the left Again, we are going back to the um, palace, obviously, in the road. You can see his Roman bath that he built himself. But again, colors from 2000 years ago. With a little bit of help, as I believe. Oh, you can see the model. Oh, the two, right here. In that area, in the upper city, um, that's where the rich Jews lived in Jerusalem at the time of Jesus, at the time of uh, the Second Temple at the time. And you can see the beautiful tools that they had. A lot of them were important. But the most important thing is the stone vases. Stone will ever stay pure, even if a pork will touch it. If it will be made of clay, they will have to throw it away. Then you can see a lot of tools made of soft limestone. Sarcophagus, or sorry, Osiri. Soon we'll talk about how the Jews used to be being buried, and that's how Jesus was buried as well. But you can see here in Osiri. Uh, after he died, a few years later, they collect his bones and put it in a small box. Why it's important for us? Because here you can find the inscription that said, Kaifa, the high priest. And 
And you know that that is the high priest at the time of Jesus. Jesus actually, uh, when he was captured at uh, Garden of Gethsemane, Gethsemane he, um, he came to the house of Caiaphas. Another important stone, another evidence for Christianity was found in um, Caesarea. But you, what you can see here is the inscription of, uh, it was made by Pontus Pilate, and even his name is here, you cannot touch it, Pilate. Amazing, isn't it? In Caesarea, when you will visit, you will, feel, you will see a few like that, but all of them are uh, replicas. This is the original evidence for Caiaphas. And if you're talking about that, another evidence of this was found in Erotion, and that's where um, we found this ring. That part is very important, because in all over history, we didn't find any evidence for crucifixion all over the Roman Empire, not only here. And in this Osiris, we found one of the bones. You can see that the Osiris is not so important or beautiful or decorated like the high priest one. And we are talking about a simple person, and we know his name, Yohanan ben Hangol. You can see it here, Yohanan John the son of Hango. And what we find here is in this bone, an evidence for the crucifixion. This is a crucifixion nail. According to what we know through that nail, that one was crucified like that. They nail him to both sides of the um, wood. We found it in Jerusalem. Then the only crucifixion nail evidence is here in that museum. in the other race. We found a lot of them with the names of the people. But let me talk about what's actually happened. When someone, a Jew, will die, they will bury him, the him at the same day. They will purify this body and they will put a shroud around him, just like they did to Jesus. And then they will bury them in the kuchim, in those niches. They will seal it. A few, like, a few years later, when they will have to bury someone else and there was no more room, they will open one of the kuchim, they will take the bones out, they will put it in the osiris like that, and they will bury him. They used to mark the names of it that they will know who is buried there. And for example, here you can see the name of Yehuda, Judah, Baal, the son of Yeshu, Yeshua, which is the name of Jesus. Yehuda, Baal, Yeshua. Amazing, isn't it? And the good thing is that I can read it. And here, they did it again. But this time, his name was Yeshu, son of Joseph. I started to read his name here, but there was no more space. Yeshu. And here, Yeshu, Ba Yosef. Then the word Yeshu, it's actually come from Yehoshua, Joshua. But it's difficult to pronounce it. Then they short, you know, like a nickname was Yeshu or Yeshua. Then you can call Jesus, Yeshua, or oh, Yeshu, it's the same. And that is an osary of a child. There you can see me. 
And if I'm talking about sarcophagus, beautiful and for rich men. Found it in Man's Capus, which is part of wonderful life for me. And more and more options of tombs, other rich sarcophagus. It's not the end. I want to show you a few more objects. Here, for example, you can see again limestone tools that used by the Jews and maybe the water that was turned into wine, according to the book of John, is, was in those kind of vessels. At John, John 2, 6, they say for Jewish rites of purification. Here it is. And again, remember, it's made of uh, limestone that it will be always purified. Even if blood of pork, pig will actually fall into that vase. I think the earliest uh, inscription for the word Yerushalayim, like the Israelis actually mentioned, and not like the Bible, Shalem, Yerushalayim, it was found at very close to the central bus station not long time ago, and that is from the first century BC. And you can see here Hanania Ba Dodlos from Jerusalem, from Yerushalayim. And the lower word here is Yerushalayim. And it's so nice that I can still read it. And if we're talking about the temple itself, I just took a video of uh, the old city, uh, the, um, the, the city from the time of Jesus, uh, through the model that we do have here in the amazing museum. Then we found some evidence for the existence of it. The first one will say, no foreigner shall enter, in Greek, because it was made for foreigners. Um, this is the Holy of the Holy for the, uh, of the temple. That's where the high priest entered once he here in Yom Kippur. Uh, Non-Jews, foreigners can enter until there. Can see that fence? That's where we found the inscription. If you will cross that fence, <laughs> you can be killed legally. This is, I think, the only option the Jews could allow to kill foreigners or a person. Jesus was never killed by the Jews. They have no force to do that. The only one who could do that are were the Romans. Here, a place of trumpeting, when um, on uh, f Saturday, which is Friday evening, uh, we had to tell the people that Saturday enters now. This is a difficult uh, thing because we had, at that time, no internet. Then someone used to stand there and he used a trumpet and everyone knew when Shabbat enters and when Shabbat ends. And you can see here the original stone, Lebet Hatkia, Yahaleh, the place of a trumpeting, where it was, right there. I talked about it at the movie about uh, Davidson Center, you can see Robinson uh, Arch. Another important thing that we found at the Jewish uh, quarter is the menorah. Um, and that's thanks to the Jordanians who destroyed uh, Concord, uh, the city in 1948, and destroyed, destroyed the Jewish quarter. And when we came back in 1967, we excavate and we find so many evidence. This is the menorah. Now, why that menorah is so important? Because the one who did it. It was kind of a graffiti on one of the um, uh, one of the um, um, walls. It's now located at uh, uh, beneath the Jewish quarter. It's called the Herodian quarter, and um, it's important because he saw it. Then, if he saw the menorah, he knew exactly how it looks like. And um, we have so many articles about the menorah, the shape of the menorah. To the right of it, you can see another important thing, and this is the showbread table, which is part of it. And um, 
the priest used to go there and one of them was a career the father of um, the future father of uh, of John the Baptist and then the angel Gabriel came to him amazing isn't it while he was using the incense you know the osary now and you know that it's not of a very important uh, Jew but what he is written here is very important it's actually Simon Simon Bana Aichal, the one who built the temple. Uh, King Herod used around 10,000 people to build the temple, and one of them was Shimon. Shimon, Bana Aichal. Shimon, Simon, very important name. You know, I think you already know that we had uh, a lot of Simons in the Bible. And half a shekel, a Jew used to donate after Shekel, when he came to the temple. The only problem is that that Shekel, all right, now I can see better, is with the figure of Hercules, which is not a Jewish god, and the Jews cannot use it. Then inside the temple, or outside the temple, you could exchange money from half a Shekel to Jewish coins. Amazing, isn't it? There are so many things to see in that museum, but I don't have a lot of time, then I'm just going out. I mean, the way we are going out in history, going back in history as well. Oh, no, no, let me, let me, let me take you to see who destroyed Israel in the second century and what's happened because of it. Oh, before that, yeah, before that. Mesada, this is the three palaces that King Herod built at the north side. And we find there's so many things. Let's start with the hair of a child or a woman and a comb next to it. Sandals. And... <sighs> that is... That belongs to one of the Roman um, uh, that is um, Armon, uh, armor scales of a Roman soldier. And coins from 67 until 70 until the destruction of the temple by Vespasianus and his father and his son Titus. Rolling stones, seal uh, stones, and ballistic stones. Um, that's how the Romans tried to enter with that, and that's the rolling stone that. Uh, they just try by that to stop the just from entering into it. Let's stop next to Adrian statue. We found it in the north of Israel, northeast of Israel, in Beth Shean, which is an important place because King Hare Saul was killed by the Philistines and the hang is body there. Adrian came to here at uh, around 132 until 35 and he um, came to your after or before it all depends on you ask the second revolt of Bakochva I believe it was after and he because of it um, he changed the name of Jerusalem to Alia Capitolina by his family name and he changed the name of Israel into Palestine. From the second century, Palestine was Israel. I mean, Israel was always Israel, but another name of Israel was Palestine. Look at the beautiful mosaic floor.
And that's how people, rich people actually, um, ate. It was kind of cut over carpet and people used to sit on the carpet, on the mosaic floor, no tables. Then when I'm entering to the room, the last supper, people ask me about the tables, no tables. A lot of Roman figures that we find here in Israel, but I'm entering until they will uh, kick me out from, uh, of here. Two more Christians, Samaritans, and Jewish evidence that we found from that time, and a little bit later than that. That is part of the Chorazin synagogue that was uh, at uh, the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus cursed that place. He said that he didn't listen to me. That's it. We're going to destroy it. What you see here is a basil stone from 4th to 6th century. It's part of the, it's part of the synagogue. Look how beautiful it is. Looks like the temple. This is another synagogue from Bechan. Remember Bechan, the place that King Saul actually been buried. And this is from the fifth and until the seventh, between the fifth and the seventh stage, uh, century. Then you can understand that now there was a huge battle between Christianity and Judaism. You can see the temple, the Echal, the Holy of the Holy, the angels of it, the menorah on both sides, the horn, and the tools of the temple. But if we we'll go to here, another synagogue, and that is in Susia, which later on you will see that the Christians used almost the same thing. This is made of marble. And if we are talking about the church, let's go to the church. See, the same, the same idea. This is the altar. Oh, wow, that's a lot. Here in that box, they used to keep um, holy things from uh, the past. It can be part of the uh, part of uh, the cross, uh, a bone of a holy man, relic. And look at the floor. You can see that there is a cross on the floor, and that is was okay until the fifth century. As I believe. They took those things from different places and uh, placed it in one one place that show you how it actually used used to be look like. You can automatically understand that we are talking about Christians here. You can see the whole aura around him. And that's what we found in Caesarea. You can see three men, and uh, you can see their worship now. The end of the name is usually with a cross. Caesarea was a capital that King Herod built, and later on the Romans, the Romans used it, Pontius Pilate Palace was there, and later on it became to be the capital of the Christians in the Byzantine time. Jerusalem became a capital later on. And there are so many souvenirs that people buy now, but as you can understand, they bought it there as well. Here, for example, you can see the fleet to Egypt. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can see it. 
um, the Ascension of Mary, or to Mary, the Crucifixion, Resurrection, and a relic box. That's how it used to be look like. There's always a hole at the top that you will actually, let's say, take a veil or something like that and put it in and then bless yourself with it. Let's say oil. See the cross on top of it. And of course crosses. Sentences from the Bible, from the New Testament. Amazing. We talk about pilgrims. Oh, do you want to be Baptist again? There it is. Let me see what we can see more in that beautiful place. You can understand I can be here for like hundreds of hours, like a few days. Uh, we are entering into the Islam time and this is not the video about it. Then we will say goodbye now and we'll continue later on. If you like that video, then uh, subscribe my channel. And be part of my friend and uh, description will find uh, ways to get a Samaritan again another tour uh, but, um, you will find links how to, uh, to reach me and if you reach that place please send me a message via YouTube and tell me that you watched it it makes me happy because there are no twist in Israel and I'm not working at all for actually more than one and a half year. It's sad, isn't it? But it gave me a little bit time for myself and I love what I'm doing. As you can understand, a million things to see. And we will talk about it in the next video. Then, thank you very much. One more thing. If you want to support me a little bit, I want to keep on working with it. I want you to see more of Israel. I know that a lot of you cannot reach it. Israel, then buy me a coffee. The link is in the description. And by donating a little bit of your love, I will be happy. I will be able to work. And by that, you can ask me to pray for you at the church, at the synagogue at the Western Mall to light a candle for you. Um, you actually can do that without buying me a coffee. But if you can, I will be more than happy. Thank you very much for watching that amazing video.